Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am your liturgist, Kimberly King. The announcements are <coughs> the youth will meet Wednesday at 5 p.m. We will honor our high school graduates, Grayson Galvin and Jordan Strickland, on Sunday, May 19th, during morning worship and at, and at a potluck, potluck dinner. There will be money jar for the Gus graduates. The May, June upper rooms are on the table in the front hall. Are there any other announcements? <coughs> Sun's just coming up up here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the hymn of praise is number 432. Yesu, Yesu, let us sing the
Songs about love lifted higher and higher. We went out for ice cream, and when I got mine, Dad paid for the next person standing in line. I helped out my neighbor by pulling up weeds to prepare her new garden for all kinds of seeds. While we got groceries, I sang Mama a song. You are my sunshine. My dad sang along. When we got to the chorus, a boy stocking beans started dancing with the girls buying ripe nectarines. I heard a high note from somewhere near the spinach. My teacher, Miss Bird, gave a big Broadway finish. I gave her a hug and my mom said, see that? Sing your love to the world and more love will come back. Sure enough, mom was right. When I checked my heart, I found even more love than I had at the start. I wanted to share it. I needed a way. Then I saw a big sign. Pet adoptions today. <laughs> I saw a sweet puppy whose big, funny feet made a thunderous noise. And she ran up to me. Puppy hugs, puppy kisses, such tail wagging wiggles. Hello, Thunder Pup, I said in between giggles. You're my pup. You're my person. We're made for each other. I hugged her and told her that I'd always love her. Mom and Dad signed some papers with lots of big words to make it official. She's mine and I'm hers. We skipped down the sidewalk and played at the park, ate dinner, and headed home just before dark. The afternoon sun turned to rain clouds and lightning, and poor little Thunder Pup found it so frightening. She trembled and whimpered. She jumped in my bed and pulled up the blankets to cover her head. I crawled in behind, beside her and gave her a hug. I got you, I said. Don't be scared, Thunder Pup. When I was a baby, no bigger than you, my mommy and daddy adopted me too. You see, Thunder, families don't all look the same, or talk like each other, or have the same name. Sometimes, extra love in your heart and your home is waiting for somebody who's all alone. No matter how life has brought us together, adoption means family and families forever. We had lots of love in our family before. With you, Thunder, Thunder Pup, we can love even more. <coughs> With Thunder Pup helping, I started to find a lot of new ways to be caring and kind. She helped clear the table while I did the dishes and made sidewalk art with paw prints and tail swishes. I showed her the garden where I painted, planted seeds. The rain helped them blossom, I said. Look at these! Marigolds, daffodils, violets of blue. We decided to take some to Miss Bird at school. Sharing love is like planting a seed that will grow much wilder and stronger than you'll ever know. The more love you get, the more love there will be. Love as much as you can every day and you'll see. That's exactly what Thunder and I like to do. Look, we put lots of love here in this book for you. So give flowers to friends and sing songs on the street. Find a way to bring joy to each person you meet. Jump out of bed every morning and say, what will I do with my love today? Isn't that a sweet story? Do you have different ways to show love? How do you show love? Do you help mommy or daddy around the house? Do you help do dishes or take out the trash or clean up the living room? Good. All right. Who wants to say our prayer? Dear God, thank you for this day and for the children of children's time and the opportunity to come to church every Sunday. Amen. Do want some candy?
kind of some, I guess, confusion about what the general conference is, and uh, what it is, is it's in North Carolina, and what it is, every 40 years, uh, they call together the people from Africa, uh, Asia, Europe, the United States, uh, North America, and then also in South America, and in the Far East, in places like the Philippines, and what it is, is they gather every 40 years to make the Book of Discipline. It's one of those things that come into committees and they do things. We have a delegation that comes from our annual conference, and they are over there in North Carolina. Our bishops are all there, and Bishop Merrill is a part of that. A part of uh, she, they lead different bishops lead the general conference, but they don't have a vote. They're just simply there to kind of keep things in order, keep things moving along. It's kind of like Congress. It's really slow moving at times, and one of those things. But the weirdest part about this general conference is it is the 2020 general conference. So what it is is that we'll have this one in two years. I guess we'll have the 2024 one. <laughs> and then we'll be back on track for 2028. It's about the discipline of trying to keep the order of all of those types of things. Because of disaffiliation, it's a much smaller group of folks that are there. They're working on the budget for the general church around the world. And... Uh, Changing, like I said, what it is is they don't amend the discipline from 2016. They don't make it or change things on it and make it different. What they do is they redo it every year. So it makes it kind of crazy the way that they work and different stuff like that. But they approve. But there's things in there. There's the general rules. Uh, there's the uh, Constitution of the United Methodist Church. Those things have to be amended and changed. And, and uh, go through a whole process, but the three general rules are in cement. <laughs> they're one of those things that they, they're, they've slightly been altered a little bit, maybe changed or whatever, back to Wesley's time, but they are one of those things that they work from that, from the Constitution, and from those three general rules, or Wesley's rules, and also Wesley's sermons and different things that they have to be, to keep it Methodist, I guess is how I want to say it. But it's one of those things we have, uh, Bishop Merrill there, we have Mark Norman, and another group, I don't know all of the names of the folks that went there, but at the annual conference, we elect those people to go to general conference. So annual conference is the state of Arkansas, 
And then um, we have, uh, the, that's the annual conference. But the general conference is, the, as I said, the world. And then we have what's called a jurisdictional conference. And uh, they're actually making some legislation where that's going to be disappearing. But the point it is, is the jurisdictional conference, what they do is they vote and they approve bishops. So they assign them to wherever they're going to go. So the people that go to general conference also go to jurisdictional conference, and that's where they are elected. They go from room to room, and it's a crazy process, and I think you'll see more of it uh, online and different things. But the general conference has like, been elected from all the annual conferences, and then outside of the United States, they're called central conferences. And under this new plan, the United States will be a central conference. So. I don't know exactly how all of that will work, but we're, we're in that same process that we've done uh, since the very beginning of the Methodist Episcopal Church back in 17, uh, 1700. So uh, just keep your thoughts and prayers for them and uh, as they uh, try to navigate between sides and different things, uh, just pray for them to be the church and to lift that up. And I just wanted to, to share that with you because it's like uh, a lot of times, unfortunately, we assume that people know the structure of the church. And if you haven't been through confirmation, which I'm going to offer this, this uh, fall, uh, if you have not been through confirmation or you don't remember a lot of what you learned in confirmation, I want you to come and be a part of a reaffirmation effort that we have uh, to explain the church and the local church and everything uh, from the grassroots, from the, the stone that is the cornerstone of our church and all of those types of things as well. So uh, just wanted to I didn't mean to take up so much time, but, but it was one of those things that I just wanted to share with you and, and let you know that we are in pretty good hands for the most part. As I said, there's some people that but we agree to disagree and to work out, the, not sweat the small stuff, but to try to figure out what makes us uh, united, makes us together and all that kind of thing. Um, as far as prayers go, we want to remember our list. We want to remember those that are on there, those that have been a part of, uh, you know, uh, whatever situation they're facing, whether it's emotional, physical, or spiritual need, that they would be uplifted as they come in, as we come into the house of prayer to lift up our prayers for them. So if I could ask you to bow your head with this morning. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for the spirit that is with us as we come to this house, the house of your house, the house of prayer. We lift up our concerns and joys, knowing that you are the one who delivers them. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for good health, we thank you for the things that you have done for us as we go forward, knowing that there are those that suffer illness, injury, and that they need the comforting spirit of God to be with them. We know that you are the great physician and that you are the healer of all things, whether it be our minds, our bodies, or our souls. We lift ourselves up as we lift up one another in love to you. Bless this day, bless this time together. As you lead God and protect us, we ask that you help us to be your disciples, to be the ones who show the love of God to those who are lost and those who are in need. Bless this day and thank you for all that you do. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite you to join me as Christ taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our I was going to say, when I was growing up and we did this, they asked one of the deacons of our church, the Church of God, they asked one of the deacons to pray. And thus, in the back row, you see how long a, preacher, I don't know, a deacon could pray uh, for a service and stuff like that. But I want to tell you uh, that it's always a blessing to be able to serve and to be good stewards of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings you've bestowed upon us, knowing that we give back a little of what you've given us. But help us to take that, that small gift that we give that it might be for the building of your kingdom. And we ask and do all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
Most heavenly and gracious God, we offer our gifts, tithes, and offerings for the building of your kingdom. And it's in your name that we give and we do, and we thank you for the love that you have for us. In your name we pray. tell you too that I went to Pine Bluff yesterday and uh, had a really good meeting with my uh, actually my circuit elder uh, that we had, uh, Brian Dippy at Monticello first night at Methodist Church and uh, Edna Morgan our district superintendent it was uh, kind of her last event uh, for us as licensed local pastors. What it is I, uh, I'm not ordained, I'm actually a licensed local pastor and the difference between the two is kind of murky for me as far as that goes do the same job, uh, if you want to call it that. And uh, the fact is, though, each year I have to go back and go before a committee and uh, to be able to reestablish my license. And then to be a licensed local pastor, you have to also be appointed. So uh, both of those things were in the positive yesterday. So uh, I continue to be here with you all, and uh, I hope that you're uh, okay with that. We'll be here for maybe another year as we go through that in ordination. Uh, as that process works out for me and stuff, we, we'll see how, uh, and I, I want us to have a long history again. And I, as I say, it's been kind of a crazy couple of years uh, between COVID and all the other things that have gone on. And uh, Kim and I have been in three churches through COVID, Osceola, McGee, and um, then up to uh, Marshall, Leslie. So uh, coming back, it's like the kind of a new era. It's like a post-COVID, but uh, I know that that still, that disease, it will still exist. Uh, so uh, we want to continue to pray for those folks that are affected by that as well. But uh, being there with uh, the, our district superintendent, uh, she's re-retiring. She'll be the mandatory <coughs> retirement for uh, clergy is 72 years old. So uh, she's been uh, with us for three years in the Southeast District. And then I also wanted to let you know that I got a letter from Zach Roberts. He's the district superintendent of the Northeast District, and that's it's in Jonesboro, is where it's kind of headquartered as opposed to Pine Bluff, and we will be a part of that district uh, come July 1. And uh, I was going to say, uh, Phillips County and, and farther north all the way up to Mississippi County and then all the way across the state over to Stone County. So we're a pretty big district. Uh, I think it was, uh, they had some numbers and different stuff like that to show the differences. But we will have the South District, the Central District, the North West, and the Northeast District. And we'll be a part of that Northeast District. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I know some of the folks up north of us, uh, places like Hughes and Mariana and, and all of that, uh, working back in, up to uh, Osceola and Glyville and back up across the country, so or across the state. So uh, keep in prayers for the changes that are coming up for us. And uh, pray for our church and our, our church leaders, as I was saying. I, I mentioned general conference, but it's like one of those things that's a lot of, uh, we need to share the love of each other to be able to work things out and to build uh, the new United Methodist Church and to, and to see the things and have our voices heard. And uh, as I say, we've nominated some folks from here, this part of the, of the county, to be able to be sit on boards. And as those things come together, we'll let you know who they are 
and, uh, and different things as well. But uh, not that it's a secret or anything, but it's just one of those uh, you get different people. Let those people let you know who they are and what they're doing and how they're uh, a part of this uh, new district and new things that are going on with that as well. Uh, July 1st, I end up I'm in History and Archives for the annual conference. And we have our museum at North Little Rock First United Methodist Church, and then we'll have the archives. They'll continue to be at Hendrix, uh, and they're in Conway, so at the Hendrix College. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I think uh, I love anthropology and archaeology and, and God's people. I love our history. I love being known and, and who it is and what it means to be a part of, of, of a greater, of a greater uh, commitment uh, to serving God. Um, our scripture today comes from 1 John. It's 4, 16b uh, to 21. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not, whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate a brother or sister are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God, whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. I think that it's kind of interesting that we think about love a lot of times, and I love the, uh, the children's message today and the story that was a part of that because of the fact that uh, the amazing part is that God loves us uh, unconditionally. And in the Greek, uh, and you've probably heard this before, uh, they love the word agape. It's, it's one of those Greek words that they just, but it's unconditional love. And that does not mean that God loves you despite the fact that you rebel against him. Uh, or that you do all of those things. What it means is that God loves you simply because he does. It's one of those things that we sometimes get caught up in the idea of romantic love or, you know, and all the different uh, kinds of love there is. But we kind of focus it on that. I love you. What it is, is it's more important than saying I love you is to show I love you. If we do that, we do it in a way that brings and opens us up to the idea of that God's love is something that can be shared. God will not love you less because he loves someone else. What it is, is it just kind of grows. It grows in a way that it's funny that, uh, you know, we may have our favorite child, and we may have, the, you know, the, that we uh, say that, and, and I've always joked about, I continue to joke about the fact that my mother believed that whoever was in the room <laughs> at the time, that was her favorite child. And then it got kind of sketchy when there would be more than one of us in the room. It's just like, well, and then, uh, you know, my sisters and brothers would complain that I was the one that she liked the best, and I would complain about different ones that I thought that she liked the best. And I think it's amazing to see how it is. Uh, unfortunately, that kind of grows. That grows within, between denominations, or within denominations, and different things that we think, oh, well, we're the Baptist church, so that God loves the Baptists better than he loves all them other folks. Or the Church of Christ, and God loves us, and he, them other people, they just don't know that they're not the favorites or whatever it might be. Or the United Methodist Church, that we think that maybe we are a little more special, a little more important. <coughs> I think that it's amazing to see, uh, I have been in ministerial alliances, and I have loved and loved the people of the Disciples of Christ Church. The Second Christian Church, back in Missouri, when I served there at the two uh, at Harris Ford and at St. James, the thing that was most amazing and the love that was shared by those people at the Second Christian Church, those people that were there in Fulton, Missouri, they just welcomed me and opened up doors that I would never have had the opportunity to be able to serve people in a way that they were, were excited about. It was not that I was their pastor, but it was everything I did and everything I knew, I heard Reverend Mullins. I would be at Walmart. <laughs> And some little kid from the back, or five rows down the thing, 
I would hear, hey, Reverend Mullins, and he'd come running, or she'd come running, and they'd hug me, or, or whatever. Just, and I thought it was great to be a part of a community that loves you. Back years ago, during Easter, on Good Friday, back in my home denomination, back at home in Ohio, it was one of those things that they had the seven sayings of Jesus, and they did it on Friday. Seven pastors from seven different church of gods would come with their accompaniment, and they would do the whole uh, list of things and things that Jesus said on his way to the cross and to his resurrection. And I thought it was amazing. So I call up, I call up to the church, and I tell them, uh, you know, I, I was wanting to see uh, brother talk to Brother Collins because I wanted to know. <laughs> I wanted to know about this uh, service that we had years ago, and uh, I wanted to bring it to Arkansas. I wanted to bring it to our churches that we had locally, uh, the Methodist churches, and I wanted to bring that seven sayings of Jesus there. Well, I pick up the phone, and I'm talking to this, the secretary, and all of a sudden, it was like she had this epiphany when she was talking to me. Oh, my God, you're Tommy Mullins. <laughs> It could not, you know, it just went into that. And it's like one of those things. I hadn't been home in 27 years. I hadn't been to the church probably in 25 years uh, there. And, and it was amazing to me that they remembered me. <laughs> they remembered me. And I can remember that being built in that love that came from being a part of that congregation. The thing is, I have noticed that as I have served from place to place, even though we may argue a little bit, like sibling rivalries that we have in different churches, I'm always amazed because you're always a family. It's always a part of a family that is doing something for their neighborhood, doing something for their community. Not only their family and friends, but also the people that maybe they don't, they're not so lovely, they're not so kind, but they extend that love to that group, and they're well, we're, we're good at that. We're very good at that. But the thing is, we need to expand from being good to each other to being good to those out there, to being good to the other. I think it's amazing to know that God loves us so much that he gave his only son. He gave him to us so that we might be able to understand the love that he has. The love that he has for you and for me, and being able to share that love in a way that's not abusive, it's not, uh, it's not that sibling rivalry stuff that we go through. But it's about the stuff that we do when it's like your brother or your sister or your best friend. The thing is, we have a best friend in God. God is our best friend. It's one of those things we can't make it without him. We may be fallen out in the world, but the fact is, when it comes to the love that God has for us, we need to be more like God. You know, we want to be me first, and I need this, and I need that. And I don't know why they got it and why I don't have it and all the kind of arguments that we have. And sure, that's a part of being a human being. Christ saw it when he walked on this, this planet, when he walked on the earth, and he saw how we told each other. And he came out and told us, tells us, love your neighbor. How can you love your neighbor? And how can you love God if you don't love your neighbor? How can you express the relationship that God has for you when you don't show it to those around you, when you do not show God's love in a way that builds up and strengthens and makes people feel better and do better, not something that's surface, not saying, I love you, but I'm doing this because I love you. I'm doing this because God loves me, and I want you to know his love as well. I worry about those who, who don't experience that love, the people that are abused and and have to deal with all the things that they've had to deal with. The people that have made some bad choices and have ended up behind bars or they've ended up in the ground because of those bad choices. I am so grateful to a God who extends a grace that is beyond anything that I can imagine. A grace that is a preventing grace as we talk about and the fact that God draws us into the family of God. And then we have justifying graces when we repent and we come to understand how important God's love is for us and that we, we put ourselves on the altar. We give ourselves as a sacrifice. God, lead me, guide me, help me. And then there's sanctifying grace. That's the love that comes from God. Sanctifying grace is when you become better because you are better towards others. That you are doing things. 
you can't work your way into heaven. I remember back in the camp that you couldn't get to heaven on a rowboat or whatever it was. <laughs> it's been a long time, but it's like the song was one of those things, all the things that you could try to do to get into heaven. The fact is, all you have to do is love each other and not make that, make that an action word. Make it where you love each other by doing and sharing and being that way towards each other. We are so good about tearing each other down. You know, I think about the government. The government spends lots of money to kill people. But I'm kind of confused. Why don't we spend lots of money to heal people? Whether it be their minds, their bodies, or their souls. You know, we have those things that we are in charge of. That we are here on this earth to be put together so that we can be that kind of family. And to have God's love anywhere and everywhere we go and in everything and all the things that we do. Amen. 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 We have an invitation. <coughs> it's number 572, pass it on. Let us stand together and say. <laughs> transform our world in ways that lead others to know you as their personal Savior. Bless us and keep us as you lead God and protect us. And all of these things we say and we do in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.